In this series of videos, we'll be introducing the F256K and Junior Super Basic, which is a basic interpreter and operating environment for the F256 series of machines. Super Basic was developed, uh, designed and developed by Paul Robson. Uh, Paul Robson is a UK based developer who has a, a history or at least a, a long career of doing IT work and education. Growing up in England, he was heavily influenced by the machines he used as a youth, um, as, as many of us were. And in his case, it was the Acorn uh, BBC Micro, among other systems. And if you know anything about Acorn, I'm, I'm really just learning about them myself. They had a, a series of machines before their success with the BBC Micro. And that micro machine was, was largely um, available in Europe and you know didn't get quite that far into the States and elsewhere. Um, however, in doing some research for this, I found out that there were some school systems and some uh, pockets in and around the United States that, that bought quite a few of them. To start with, all of these um, short videos, uh, they're being shot as something I'm calling a quick take video, which is a video shot in uh, you know 10 minutes or so with minimal editing, one take, uh, rough agenda, and some things I'd like to kind of walk through. And then um, hopefully everything will work out. There'll be a few missteps along the way. Um, during the editing process, I'll, I'll try and make corrections and point out references and links uh, if I stumble upon anything in review. But the idea is to get this um, off the plate and published rather quickly with, a, again, a, a minimum of, of editing, special effects, and all that fancy stuff that uh, people uh, tend to throw into a YouTube video. I'd like this to be consumable. I'd like it to be useful. I'm hopeful that it'll inspire people to take a, a closer look and get more out of their system, in this case, their, their Phoenix system. We'll begin with the basics of Super Basic, uh, which is a welcome to the platform. We'll discuss the screen editor, um, its similarity to some of the other machines that were classic in the 1980s, uh, such as the Commodore systems. We'll talk about, lead, about loading and saving programs to SD and IEC devices. We'll discuss memory management and the extended memory use of Super Basic and how it deals with the MMU specifically, how it interacts with the kernel. We'll talk about Super Basic intrinsics uh, and, and values uh, that um, support name procedures and functions, um, loops and conditionals, and some language features that were not common in the early 80s or late 70s as far as the basic programming language is concerned. From there, we'll move on to uh, graphics, which uh, tend to be, of course, some of the more exciting um, aspects of, of personal computing. And we'll talk about bitmaps, including super basic commands to draw um, various geometric shapes. Um, we'll talk about screen colors. We'll talk a little bit about tiles and uh, scrolling definition, uh, tile editors, map editors. Um, we'll talk about sprites. And then we'll move along to a, a, a section on sound and audio. The audio section will discuss the um, super basic support of the TI SN76489 uh, only. And I say only because it's the only chip that PSG, as it's called, is the only chip that super basic supports natively, for, with basic commands, that is. Um, having said that, it, it should be noted that across the board, the full memory map of all the registers and all the features of Phoenix are accessible from BASIC. And you can do that with the traditional poke and peek. Uh, you can do that with inline assembly language and, and you can do that by loading code into various locations with binary load and save commands. Uh, from the sound uh, section, which will cover some of the built-in commands, uh, both for making uh, musical or, or tonal pitches, uh, there's some sound effects as well, uh, some simple sound effects you can incorporate into your programs. We'll move along to talk about the inline assembly function, which certainly was a BBC basic uh, derivative. Mm. I won't get too much into assembly language, but we'll at least cover the high level basics where you'll use assembly language uh, within super basic versus writing your code offline and incorporating it with a you know, binary assembled image that you'll load into memory and execute. The assemble command and the uh, facility built into uh, super basic is, is certainly capable and I'll highlight one such application that uses it uh, to great effect. I'll also take a stab at converting one of the first programs that I've written for, for the Phoenix platform, 
which was about a year and a half ago, which was a um, Commodore balloon variant. And finally, we'll wrap up with the conclusion and uh, talk about some of the trade-offs of, of writing uh, programs in BASIC versus other languages. Um, to me, BASIC is accessible. It's immediate. Um, it's a great environment to learn. And in fact, I know of developers or hobbyists that start uh, developing software in BASIC uh, to get the main algorithm out of the way, get prototypes developed, and then move on to assembly to recode uh, parts or all of the application in assembly. And I'll be highlighting one such effort uh, written by a developer named Darren Folds in, uh, in BASIC first or prototyped, and then we've gone to assembly language. Um, I've ported that to Phoenix, and I'll be releasing that at the end of this series.